again, and it's been a long time since I made a video. I think the last video I made was the uh, underwater crappie footage. That was right at ice off. So uh, the ice is melted right now, but uh, it's we still got some really weird back and forth weather. The bass don't know what they're doing yet. I, honestly, I don't know what I'm doing yet. So uh, just got the boat out of storage and we're fixing stuff up on it. So uh, since we got the boat back home, that kind of pushed me to go get some more tackle. And that's what this video is going to be about. I went to Bass Pro Shops. I spent, I think it was about 110 bucks. I still had some gift cards left from Christmas, so I went over there and used those up. But uh, I'll show you what we got. Uh, but yeah, um, as you can see, I got kind of a nice mix of like my hobbies behind me. So uh, if you're into airsofting, obviously fishing, or cars, or miscellaneous, miscellaneous like cool nature photography or anything like that, please uh, follow me on Instagram. I will put the link in the description so it won't interrupt the video with it or anything so just after the video if you're interested go down and look also go check out northwest bassin on facebook and all right you guys so as i said went to bass pro picked up a good assortment of things uh main thing i needed from there was some uh 12 pound cigar and uh, i was actually pretty surprised i don't know if they've done it everywhere but this bumped up in price by like four bucks this year and i don't know if it was just bass pro but uh it was a little expensive for some reason <laughs> but uh gotta have it so next up but on the bright side uh they did have some stuff on sale they had a uh, lucky craft square bills on sale i got one in the white shad pattern uh, it's pretty much just like a gizzard shed, only the back is more broken up and black. And it's got a tiny, tiny little red lateral line on it. Uh, honestly, I haven't really used a lot of Lucky Craft square bills. I've used mostly Striking 1.5s and the uh, RCU Rick Clunts. So, uh, pretty excited to try that out. I haven't really used them, so, yeah. Alright, kind of trying to stick to a theme here. If I can find them. Did I grab it? Okay. Yep. Uh, they, uh, their uh, lipless crankbaits were decimated, so they didn't have a regular sexy shad. So I settled for a chartreuse sexy, chartreuse sexy shad in the half ounce, uh, the red eye shad, I should say. So uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of a go-to for this time of year, and gotta have it. So there's that. Okay, I got myself another uh, dip and glow spike it garlic pen. It's the chartreuse and orange. My last one broke in half in my backpack and I was devastated because I use this a lot. So I had to get another one. Uh, it's really great for uh, if you have like a watermelon or a pumpkin color bait and you put a little chartreuse on the tail, it kind of gives you that little bluegill tail glow in the water and it's really cool. And then obviously orange for like uh, either putting it on bellies of baits or uh, the tips of claws for crawfish and bluegill. Next. Alright. Next up we have got some lure customization stuff. I bought some skirts. This is a uh, kind of a crappie pattern. It's uh, supposed to be chartreuse illusion. So basically, uh, I went with the closest thing I could possibly figure out, like, for crappie. Since one of the lakes we go to, the bass just gorge themselves on year-round. And I'm going to throw that on a spinnerbait with uh, some Colorado blades. So, yeah. Talking about spinnerbaits, uh, we'll go to my stain water go-to color of uh, this and black. I will go with with like Colorado blades but when you have a fire tiger color you don't really need the extra thump in the water because this is usually bright enough and with a gold blade on a willow you'll be you'll be more than okay uh, I try to shy away from the big Colorado blades as much as I can because they sometimes they scare the fish away with all that vibration even so yeah we'll go with that one But I'm going to contradict myself, uh, I got a uh, Sexy Shed double Colorado blade. Uh, I don't know. It's just the Tournament Series spinnerbait from Strike King. Uh, 
I usually try to go with these because they already come with trailer hooks on them and that just kind of saves you some money. And uh, yeah, a Strike King, I've always had great success success on them, so yeah, kind of spinner baits are always successful anyways, but go with the Strike King. And that's in the uh, 3 8 ounce, that's kind of my go-to weight. And then we have a half ounce uh, War Eagle. It's the uh, white and silver. It's got one Colorado blade on it in gold and then a nickel willow. Uh, this, I'm trying to kind of stick with a, a crappie theme. I'm gonna, what I like to do with this is I'll take a Sharpie and I'll dot the skirt in black so it looks like a crappie. And I'll put a little, tiny little uh, kick and grub on the back. we will see if I can find that for you. But that is in the uh, half ounce. And then here they are. It's a little uh, paddle tail shed from Bass Pro. It's a BPS brand, and it's called uh, what is this color? Disco Magic. But I'll take one out. But uh, it's real little. It gives you a real, real, real subtle little uh, kick, just real little. And that little subtle uh, extra kick on it is. Night and day difference. Uh, I will never throw a spinnerbait without a trailer on it. I've learned from like just talking from a few pros, from family members that are diehard bass fishermen, and just anywhere else. Uh, pro tip: This is supposed to be sort of secret information, but uh, they do not make spinnerbaits the way they used to. Like their skirts used to have a little kick to them, and now they don't really. They'll kind of flutter and flare. So uh, if you have something on the back of it, I guarantee you, you'll get more bites. Yeah. Ugh. And then to go with them, uh, I couldn't find, they didn't have any Gamakatsu or uh, Strike King Mustad trailer hooks. So I went with the Bass Pro trailer hooks, they were pretty cheap, they're like three bucks, so not bad. It uh, says they got VMC hooks in them, so uh, I don't know about that, but we'll go with those. And there are three out. Next, oh, one more in there. I got a, another lipless drink. This is from Appella. This is in the uh, red crawdad. Obviously, just red crawdad. I'd call it like watermelon because it's got some green on the back, but uh, I can't remember what weight this was. But uh, yeah, it's. The RPR7, but uh, Lake Fork guy, you inspired me to buy this after watching you catch a 7 pounder off of one so, <laughs> in clear water, so that's kind of why I picked this one up, so shout out to you. And next, we'll go with an assortment of jigs here. Let's see, first up, we'll go with... This guy, Bass Pro had a really big bin of jigs on sale, and they were going for two and a half bucks, and they were these striking heavy duty jigs. It's uh, just black and blue color. It's kind of a casting jig. The only concern I might have with this jig is it's got one of those brassy kind of hooks on them, and those are typically a lot lower quality, but uh, it should work. I'm probably going to get it hung up in a tree in like five casts anyway, so <laughs> yeah. The next, let's see here. Got three pack attack jigs. Uh, I got another one in black and blue. This is a 3 8 ounce. Uh, I was just kind of looking for a good general casting jig or a grass jig to get through stuff. Because even in the cold months, uh, the bottoms of our lakes are real scuzzy and covered in milfoil on that nice slimy moss. It's like not even moss. <laughs> but yeah, I like to go through or go with jigs that go through stuff a lot better. Okay, but uh, we got another hack attack jig here. It's in a 3 8 ounce. I believe this color is just like a watermelon red flake, but it's got brown and green pumpkin on it too. So it's I'm guessing it's more of a bluegill color. But the color itself is uh, watermelon, watermelon red flake, and it's in the uh, 3 8 It's another kind of a casting jig. So that's good for moderately stained water. Uh, I'll throw like a super super dark uh, watermelon uh, 
or pumpkin craw trailer on it to kind of make it stand out. Next, we got a thir the third hack attack. This is an Okeechobee craw, and it's a 3 8 ounce. It's just, it, obviously a lot of you know what Okeechobee craw is, but that's typically a watermelon blue with some blue flake in it. And it's just kind of a really go-to color to your uh, borderline muddy water or stained because you've got natural and blue to stand out with some bright flakes. So it's a great color for uh, sunny days with dark water. Then we got two more. These are kind of a more natural approach. This is the uh, all-terrain tackle football head jig. More, more of a dragging jig, but uh, this is in the watermelon red flake. And this color I'll tip throw in moderately clear water on a sunny day. Uh, I really don't like a lot of flake unless it's sunny because it'll kind of make it glint and show up a lot more. That's kind of a no-brainer for fishermen, but that's a quick tip for you. Uh, sunny days where you typically want to use more flake. Sort of like it works for overcast too, but I mean, I don't know. There's something about sunny days and flakes. And then last but not least, we got a green pumpkin terminator jig in 3 8 ounce. And, uh, yeah, that's just a real skinny head for getting in between milfoil and stuff without bringing too much of it back with you. And it's good for skipping. These are probably my favorite jigs for skipping under docks and stuff. But, uh, yep, that is the Terminator. What is the name of this? It's just a unique pros. It's just a Terminator jig. They don't have a name for it. But yep, there it is. Yeah, you guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please check out some of the information in the description. It'll take you to Northwest Bass and Facebook page, my Instagram, or just head on down to the bottom of this video and leave me a like and subscribe. It really, really helps me. Last time I liked, we're at 576 subscribers, and that's that's quite a bit for this channel, honestly, because I don't have a whole ton of videos. I'm working on that. But uh, my computer only lets me do so much. It deletes a lot of my videos <laughs> as I make them, so sad day. But uh, thanks, guys, for watching, and...